Welcome to another episode of Guard Life Flourish. Whether it's your home life or your guard life, the goal is that we flourish. And today we have a special guest. I'm pretty excited about this. The, uh, the, the, the Brigadier General, the Land Component Commander of the Army National Guard here in the great state of Nevada, Brigadier General Troy Armstrong. Sir, thank you for being here. Hey, thank you for the invite, Chaplain. I'm super excited to be here as well. Yeah, the, uh, it's, it's really awesome because I know that you hold down a career not only in the, in the Guard, but you also have a civilian career that demands a lot of your time. So we, we're, I'm very honored that you made the, made the time to be here today. And I, we're going to be uh, as, as, as stewards of your time to the best of our ability. Um, if you wouldn't mind, first off, would you share with us really what Land Component Commander is, um, what your responsibilities are? Because I think for a lot of our young soldiers, airmen, Nevada National Guardsmen, family members, whoever it is, you know, you're sitting at the top of the, at the top of that pyramid scheme. And all of a sudden, all these soldiers are down here, down at the working level, doing what you do, working in the civilian career, and then coming to their guard drills. Share with us what you do at the top and what the land component commander really is all about. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and I'll tell you, Chaplain, usually when I go out and I talk to soldiers and um, formations, I have to kind of remind myself to introduce who I am and actually what my title is so people do know. Yeah. Uh, because most soldiers uh, in units don't always look all the way to the top of an organization. They see their captains and lieutenants, and that's, uh, for the most part, where it stops. So yeah. as a land component commander slash assistant adjutant general for the Army, uh, Nevada Army National Guard, my primary responsibilities, just like all commanders, are to ensure the... Um, manning, equipping, and training of our uh, units and organizations so that they can uh, fulfill their Title X roles to be able to mobilize, uh, deploy, and um, support combatant commanders across the globe. So that's the primary, that's the number one responsibility yeah. I have. Making sure our units are filled with uh, qualified individuals, making sure that those individuals get the proper training and making sure that they have the equipment needed to do their jobs. The second piece to that is ensuring that those organizations and those soldiers are available to support missions across the state and really across the nation if needed. And I think you've seen that uh, really over the last couple of years, more so than, than in a while, really with the response to COVID-19 and um, you know the response to the capital, uh, the national capital region during the riots. And, and so we've been super active over the last couple of years. In addition to those missions of uh, the Title X, you know, support of combatant commanders, the support of the state missions, the other responsibility that, that I have, just like commanders at every level, is to ensure the uh, good order and discipline of our, uh, of our units and our organization, to ensure that our service members are treated with uh, professionalism, dignity and respect, make sure that uh, they all have the same opportunities for promotions and for awards, and the opportunity to really grow and flourish in this organization, yeah. and, and I take that responsibility very seriously as well. So. That's kind of a quick snapshot. Oh, of yeah. View. We could probably talk about yeah. that for the entire session, though. Yeah. <laughs> we could talk, probably talk the rest of the day. But I think that also, um, what you talked all guard their stuff. Right. And it, there's a tremendous amount of responsibility in that in itself. I mean, that's, like you said, it could take the rest of the day just to explain right. it. Uh, and you try to fit that in on two days a week, two days a month, two weeks of the year. That doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, you're always working, always going. And added to that, you have a civilian job. You have a civilian career that you hold down as well. And you have for years. Mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing us with what you do in the civilian career? Yeah. So I worked for Clark County, Nevada for about 33 years, mm -hmm. um, full-time uh, within the Department of Family Services, coming up on 29 years uh, this September. So currently I'm the manager of what we call management services, which is the majority of um, admin services for a department of about 1,000 staff, the second largest department in the county that provides child welfare services. Uh, to the residents of Clark County. So mm. that's Child Protective Services, adoption, um, uh, and and um, and uh, foster care. So okay. Those are all the services that take place here to ensure that uh, children are safe within their homes and within the community. And and so that's kind of my primary, uh, uh, what I do now. So I was the manager for over field services and child protective services for many years. And over the, about the last four years, I've been an uh, administrative manager. So. Okay. Well, man, that's awesome. So, and I'm just summarizing up what, what I just heard you say from land component commander to civilian career. You have a tremendous amount of caring for people in there. I, I, you talked about management, this, that, and the other. Thank you for what you do. And thank you for all of the work that you not only do in the guard, but you do in the civilian world here in, in Clark County. It's just awesome. Thank you. I think that the question that I would have is this, let me build it though. The, uh, 
33 years, Clark County. How long have you been in the military? Uh, 34 years this October. As wow. Fact. 34 years. That's yeah. just awesome. And you started off. Tell us a little bit about that before yeah. I get to my question. Please. Absolutely. I'll tell you what. I started uh, in the Army Reserves in 1988 as a private. Um, so I was already in college, my second year of college. Mm-hmm. I knew I wanted to do something. Um, I wasn't sure what it was. At that time, I was working part time. I was going to school and I felt like I needed more purpose. So uh, I'd always had the idea of joining the military. I had gone to a recruiter when I was still in high school. And so I actually turned in that direction and joined the, the United States Army Reserves as an infantry soldier um, in 1988. So I went in as a, uh, a private first class because of the, the credits I had for college. Uh, after college, I moved out to Nevada and I wanted to be an MP, but the MPs were deployed to Desert Storm. And so they said, how about you become an armor crew member? So I joined the 221 Cav. Wow. At the time, it was 221 Armor. And I went to school to be an armor crew member on the M60A3s. And within a couple of years, uh, I decided that I wanted to do more. I looked at, um, I really looked at uh, the the leadership and the soldiers, and I, I was incredibly, really just immensely proud to wear that uniform and mm. so proud of what people in the military stood for. Yeah. And then I looked at the leadership and I said to myself, I, I saw great leaders and I saw some not so great mm. leaders. I never saw anybody that was terrible, uh, but I felt that, um, I felt that I had the opportunity and that I had the ability to provide leadership and uh and if I could do that and help improve the organization, um, that's what I kind of wanted to do. So I yeah. went to OCS, graduated, went back to Armour uh, for a few years, went to the MPs just before 9-11. And then after that, I spent uh, several, uh, three or four years I deployed, um, you know, off and on. I, I went overseas as a company commander for the 72nd MP company, then back to additional times as a field grade officer for mm-hmm. the 140th Military Police Attachment, and then uh, back again in 2016 as the uh, battalion commander for the 17th Special Troops Battalion, and then moved into brigade command, and, and then up to the land component commander uh, just a couple of years ago. Wow, 34 years. Did I hear you right? Yeah, exactly. coming up in yeah. October. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And, 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 I, and I point out, you know, anytime I get a chance to talk to my about myself, I want to point out that I'm not. Although I may be the person that reached this position, we have just a, a formation of incredible individuals that work tirelessly every day to make this a great organization. And it's not just about the top of the the, the tier. It's not a, a, just about the generals and the colonels or the commands or majors. But we have we have privates and specialists oh, yeah. that work hard every day. They have civilian jobs. They come to drill weekend. They train hard to become good soldiers. And then they rise throughout the ranks as sergeants and sergeant first classes and master sergeants and and uh, so, so again, um, you know, the goal is is to uh, to to bring people up, give them opportunities, let them excel, and uh, and uh, contribute to the mission. And uh, so, we've got a bunch of folks doing that. Remember, seventy five percent of our force is MDA. Yeah. And so, that's kind of the National Guard, and uh, very proud to be part of it. Yes. And thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, you said some really good stuff in there, but it's really going to help me set this question up. Deployed a couple times. Uh, you, early on in armor, when you're two two one cab, you just said, "Hey, I wanted to be. I want to be a leader. I, I want to be. I want to be part of this. The leading part of this organization. Whether you wanted to help make change or whether you know, you said that you had some good leaders, not some bad leaders, but you had some not so great leaders. We'll call yeah, it that. Sure. Um, you being in the county, working for Clark County for as many years as you have, you've done a lot of leadership slash management roles in the past 25, 30, 35 years. So the question that I would have for you is, is looking through that time, what were a, what are a couple aspects or character traits that you see as what it takes to be a good leader and also maybe what fosters bad leaders? What yeah. would you say to that? Well, I, I would say probably the most important thing, um, and, and I'll, I'll caveat, right? There's leaders at every level. Um, and um, you don't necessarily have to be wearing stripes or bars to be a leader. You can be a leader in your peer group. You can influence people. Yeah. Um, but I think the most important thing is you got to care and you got to want to make a difference. Mm-hmm. If, if you don't and, and you're doing it for the money or if you're doing it for the prestige or, or the rank, that's the wrong, uh, the wrong you know, answer. Yeah. Uh, you've got to have a purpose for being a leader and you've got to want to make a difference and you've got to want to take care of people. And I think that's probably one of the most important things I'd say um, where I think uh, leaders um, fail is is if they they are in it for themselves if they're yeah. in it for like I said the promotion or the pay increase um, that typically doesn't work out really well um, 
Uh, those leaders that come in because they care about the organization, they care about the soldiers, they want to make a difference, they want to be good leaders and, and yeah. provide great leadership. Those are the ones that uh, seem to do much better. Yeah. So, what I, so what I hear you say is, uh, I'm not trying to steal any kind of uh, thunder here, but really need to identify your why. Yeah. I mean, as, as long as your why is caring for people, wanting to better the organization, wanting to better yourself uh, in caring for people, um, that's an aspect or a character trait that is definitely going to build a leadership, yep. build one's leadership. Yep. But at the same side, the other side of that coin is if the, the why is about self-glorification, if the why is about making money, if the why is about trying to climb the ladder and stepping over people as you go up, that's definitely a character trait on the other side that fosters bad climate. Absolutely. In the years that you've been a manager, uh, caring for people at all levels, what, what's something that you can share with the individuals out there who are listening today? Because you set the tone. You know, you really did. You're an M day soldier, uh, and you have climbed the ranks through the 34 years that you've been doing it as holding down a civilian career, building a family. We haven't even mentioned that yet, having a family and doing military career, civilian career. What's something that you could tell them to keep on track or watch out for this? Basically what I'm saying is you look back at your younger self, what's something that you would do different or what's something you would do the same? What would you tell them out there? Yeah, well, uh, after 34 years, again, another topic we could spend quite a bit of time talking about. Uh, but I think I'd take it back to probably one thing. I mean, I mentioned that you've got to go into it for the right purpose, and and uh, and and you've got to figure out what that purpose is. I, you know, I used to tell folks, hey, when you wear this uniform, you know, take time, especially, and I, I think I've said this to graduating classes at ROTC, take time and think about what type of leader you want to be, who you are, what matters to you, uh, why you're doing this. And then kind of develop your script for life and how you're going to lead and how you're going to do things and then kind of stick to it. And um, But when I go back and look at, at uh, the time that I've spent, one of the most important things uh, that I think that you have to do is you have to understand yourself, your strengths, your challenges, and then you have to figure out how to create balance in life. Because if you're the type of leader who just comes in and does nothing but work uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you don't take care of yourself physically, mm -hmm. uh, mentally, emotionally, you don't take care of your family, you don't progress in other areas like your education yeah. or your spirituality, uh, but you just do nothing but lead and drive and lead and drive and work and work and work. Uh, that's not that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. At the same time, you can't be somebody that comes in and spends two hours a week, uh, you know, leading in the National Guard or, or really leading anywhere. You've got to be passionate enough to put yeah. the time and the effort into it. To make sure that uh, that you're preparing yourself for the challenges ahead, and, and always, you know, um, kind of leaning in first, uh, head first, you know, and, yeah. and and taking on those challenges with courage and conviction. So, but again, uh, balance is probably the most important thing. I've seen so many people um, struggle with personal challenges or other challenges in life because they were unable to find that balance. Mm. Not necessarily because they didn't try or they didn't want to. They just kind of lack the understanding or the tools necessary to do that. Yeah. And so, um, and then that brings me to, I, you know, one of the topics you've discussed a lot recently, which, which is the uh, Purple Resolve training. And, and when I think about Purple Resolve uh, in, in the National Guard in, in Nevada, this is a program that really allows us to, to kind of pause for a second, take a look at ourselves, kind of understand that why, yeah. um, and then kind of help us kind of redevelop our script for life and how we manage um, mm. ourselves and others and really develop that balance. And, and that's one of the things I really, when I, when I, when, when I think about what purple resolve is and what it means, I really think it's an opportunity for us to regroup and, and yeah. rebalance. And so, yeah, um, you so, said yeah. some, you said some amazing stuff and you, you led, led me right into the next topic. And that was, you, I heard you say balance, which is a big one. Right. I think that, you know, uh, a guardsman, a civilian, whoever, just balancing, and you mentioned the four, you know, the four spectrums that Stephen Covey talks about: your spiritual, physical, emotional, and mental. It's so easy to get that stuff out of balance, and right. you know, especially when we get focused on something. Now, I'm not saying that the world is going to be perfect, and once you take purple resolve or you have some self reflection or whatever, that that balance is going to always be in. It. But we have to understand it, yep. which leads to the next point you talked about was self reflection. Yep. I mean, how often over the last 34 years, 35 years of civilian work and leader and management. 
have you had to truly look in that mirror and say, you know what, where am I at? What am I doing? Not only as a, as a, as a guy that has, as a boss or a manager, but as somebody that's a dad, a husband, this, that, and the other. I, I think that purple resolve is it the end all be all. Sure. Maybe for some, but what it does is, is it helps us just like you said, it takes a step back, helps us look at ourselves and understand where we may or may not be balanced. It under, helps us understand where we need to improve on. It helps us identify the why. Mm -hmm. Those are big things. So next question. <laughs> next question would be this. Where, what would you tell that soldier, that airman, that family member, whoever is maybe struggling? Maybe they're out of balance like we talked about. Maybe they didn't do a little self-reflection. But what, when you walked away from Purple Resolve, because you took it, mm -hmm. it was fun, it was enjoyable, really loved having you in class. What was something that you took away from it, not only as a leader in the guard, but maybe in your civilian life, as a dad, as a husband? What are some of those things that you took away for those skeptics out there that are thinking, I don't have time to go to Purple Resolve? Right. What right. would you say? Well, and I kind of mentioned this, I think one of the most important things is this is an opportunity. If, if you walk into it and kind of put away all the busyness and everything going on and walk into it and look, uh, look at it as an opportunity to focus on yourself, that's number one. Um, you know, I, I really like some of the things that we, we, um, that we learned or relearned in there. Yeah. Some of those things I'd learned previously in life, like pattern disruption and how to kind of uh, uh, calm yourself and de-stress and and those are those are really simple things that you get out of it, um, like uh, breathing daily, and uh, uh, so, so so there's some real simple techniques. But really, uh, the the two day course again lets you refocus on yeah. purpose and the why, not just of work but of life. Yeah. And when when you're focused on what's really important, and yeah. you understand your purpose uh, for being, uh, not just working but for existing. Uh, that's huge. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people get so busy, like I said, they fall out of balance. They get so busy with work. Uh, when you kind of lose balance and you lose that understanding, you forget about the purpose of life and the purpose of why we do what we do each day. Yeah. And it's really not about a paycheck, although we all need a paycheck to pay our mortgage and our bills. Um, it's not about promotions or, or, or any of those things. Yeah. They matter to a certain degree to everybody. So yeah. don't, don't get me wrong when I say that. Um, but it's really about making a difference. It's really about having meaning and purpose in life. And uh, when you have that, you feel fulfilled. You feel like you matter. You feel like people care about you and you care about others. And, yeah. and that kind of brings everything back together. And so so that those are a couple of the things that I really walked away. I, I felt refreshed. I felt like I mattered. I felt like the people that went to the course walked away feeling the same way as well. And, and then the importance of making sure we share that with others and how we treat others is so important. You know, so important. we talk about it um, uh, routinely almost, uh, you know, every day. Yes. But what do we really do to help people understand how to do that? Right? Yeah. Um, people grow up in different backgrounds with all kinds of different experiences. And then we put them in uniform and we, you know, give them a couple of weeks of training and say, hey, this is who you are now. Well, that doesn't necessarily no. work for everyone. And so, so this is a, a great opportunity to, again, to focus on, you know, people and uh, what matters and how we treat one another, how we take care of ourselves and how that translates into how we care for others. And, and so, um, so, yeah, I'm just super excited. And, and I want people to know and understand that this, we want you to come to this class and put things away. Will the work be there when you get back? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, that's with everything, whether it's a vacation yep. or anything else. Um, but will you go back to that work with maybe a different sense of purpose and understanding, a different uh, feeling about yourself and a, about the organization as well, yeah. right? Because this, uh, the National Guard is part of the United States Army and Air Force. It's part of our military. It's, it's one of the most important um, professions that a person can engage in. It's defending freedom in our nation. And so, again, this is an opportunity for us to, to kind of uh, re-engage, um, be repurposed and, and understand the why and and uh, our purpose for being here. So, yeah. And, you know, honestly, I think that I, I don't think that you'll disagree that, um, purple resolve is not new. No. There's no concept in there. There's no, uh, something in there that you're going to go, Oh, I never heard that before. You know, oftentimes people tell, ask me what, what purple resolve is. It's a bunch of common sense, but unfortunately we operate in a world in a society that doesn't, you doesn't go with that common sense very often. I think that, um, I've heard it said before, are we the organization that we say we are? 
And I, I, well, the first time I heard that said, I thought, well, what does that mean? Well, I really thought about that. And I thought, you just said it, you know, hey, we give you a couple weeks training. We do this, that, and the other. Hey, now you're, you're this kind of guy or you're this kind of gal now. Go out and do it. That doesn't work very often. Does it work with some? Sure, I guess. But the majority of it, it doesn't. And so when it comes to Purple Resolve, I think it's a great reminder. Uh, we teach this stuff through MRT, through Assist, through Safe Talk, all those other events. This is different. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Because it goes after the why. And I think that you have said that several times. And I, and I appreciate it. We're coming to the end. Last question. Well, maybe it's not the last question, but another question. If you had the opportunity to go back and do your career over, mm -hmm. what would you change? One. Secondly, when you came across some of the biggest hurdles and challenges that life threw at you throughout your career as a mom, as a dad, as a civilian worker, as a, as a guardsman, what was something that helped you get through it? Okay, great. Um, well, you know, that's, that's actually a really good question. I say if I had to do it all over again, I'd, I'd pay more attention. And when I say that, I mean that uh, I think throughout my life, I've always uh, been proud of being able to multitask mm. and do multiple things at one time, whether it was working, you know, multiple jobs, uh, yeah. going to school. Uh, the one thing I've realized later in life is that, well, there's times where we have to multitask uh, to get things accomplished, uh, to meet deadlines. Uh, we, when you do that, you really don't do anything really well. You yeah. do a lot of things okay. And so I think what I would do is I'd go back and I'd probably be more focused yeah. um, on my education uh, in when I'm in a learning environment. I think that would be number one. Okay. And so I'd encourage everybody, if you're going to school, uh, whether it's college or if you through one of those simultaneous memberships and, and you're still in, uh, you're still in high school or, or I guess simultaneous memberships is ROTC. But if you're delayed entry and you're still in high school, focus on your education. Um, be, be present in the moment when you're learning, because I think that's really key to helping us develop, uh, not just uh, professionally, um, but just personally, uh, yeah. because, um, you know, there's, there's just so much to go, uh, with that. The other thing is in, in those personal situations too, your relationships and with your, with your spouse and with your children, same thing. Yeah. Uh, be focused when you're there with them, be with them. Don't yeah. be at work and don't be at school. Um, and so probably going back and looking at the last 30 some years, uh, my challenges had always been that I was always engaged in so many things. I was never really focused yeah. on anything Going that I was doing. Different directions. And so to the extent you can, I think you'll get some of that when you come uh, to Purple Resolve too, to help you kind of focus and understand, be in the moment, be present. No, life is short, and yeah. we we know that more so when we start reaching the later oh, years. Yeah, come on. Um, but but it's uh, it's so short that again, I think that you got to be appreciative of the moment and and the day that you're in, yeah. and not worry uh, excessively about uh, tomorrow and every other day that's gone by. Uh, live life well. Uh, take each day as the the moment and and make the most of it. And uh, it doesn't mean don't plan for the future. And, yeah, and uh, you know. Uh, live in the moment, but, but live in the moment. And that, that really is true because none of us know how long yeah. we actually have here. Be proud of what you do. Take care of your family, take care of your responsibilities. Uh, but, but, um, appreciate what you have today. That's number one. Yeah. And then the second piece to that, what has I've done? Um, I'll be honest. I mean, uh, you know, I've, I've not tried to do it on my own. Uh, yeah. the toughest times in life, um, where I really felt like I was having a, a challenge, um, uh, I've reached out and I've asked for help. Uh, sometimes it was spiritually to, yeah. to, to God. And, um, sometimes it was to a family member or a friend, somebody that I can confide in and share my feelings. And, and, uh, I'll be quite honest uh, over the last probably 10 years. Uh, one of my best sources has been you and chaplain, uh, Dandria and our chaplain corps. Fantastic. And there's never a time. And, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to come here today, not just to be part of the interview, uh, because every time I walk away from engaging with a chaplain, I always feel, uh, again, kind of refreshed and appreciated. And so I thank well, you. That's for encouraging. That. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Well, you know, uh, it's come to the time to our end, and I still have several more questions, but we don't have time for doing all those. A, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. It was really an honor that you're here. We thank you, saying thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and from my, the bottom of my heart, uh, and from the other chaplains, I know I can speak for them. Thank you for that encouraging. That really helps because oftentimes it's a, it's a, it's a thankless job. So thank you for, for the appreciation. Um, but we've come to the end. Thank you for being here. Uh, from all of us here at Guard Life Flourish, we want to thank you for being here. Uh, if you like what you heard, uh, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, 
If you have questions or maybe you want somebody else interviewed or you want something to, you want to hear about something, please just leave it in the comments because we want to get to that. We want to help you and take care for you. And once again, um, Brigadier General Armstrong, myself, our Life Flourish team, we thank you for being here. Have a great day until next time.